Hi, Linda Bowen here from StampingWithLinda.com, your cardiologist since 1997, helping you create cards from the heart. Today is my Creative Fold um, video series, and you are going to flip over this butterfly card because that's just what it is, a flip butterfly card. It uses the beautiful new watercolor wings and bold um, butterfly framelits. It's part of a bundle in the catalog. If you're planning on buying this uh, bundle, you may want to go over to my blog, stampingwithlinda.com, and check out my stamps of the month um, this month. I just released a kit featuring um, this stamp set. So let me show you how I did this card. First off, let's talk about the butterfly set. In the Occasions catalog, Stampin' Up! introduced beautiful um, the beautiful Butterfly Basic stamp set that had the three uh, framelits. This stamp set come in all three clear photopolymer and wood and with the three framelits. Now in the brand new catalog they came out with watercolor wings and the bold butterfly framelits. Now it's only two framelits but the cool thing is they interact with the framelits that you may already have. So this is the solid butterfly that goes with the but butterfly um, basic bundle and then we had the solid uh, butterfly in the butterfly basics and in the new um, framelits this one fits over top so just a lot of fun interchanging but let's go ahead and get started with our flip cart we're going to use a standard piece of cardstock this measures five and a half by eight and a half and I'm going to bring in a ruler and I'm going to mark it at the two inch mark and the three inch on both sides. So I'm going to go up here and mark two inch and three inch. I'm going to come down and I'm going to run a light pencil mark from line to line like so and then again on the three inch Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that solid butterfly, again this comes in the Butterfly Basics um, framelits, and I'm laying, I'm going to bring that up closer to the camera, I'm laying the butterfly so the center of the body is on the center of that first pencil line. Now I know we have the magnetic platform that holds things together but I am finding that I really need painters tape or washi tape something to hold it in place because I don't want that to move at all. I'm going to bring my big shot in. Sorry about that. I uh, forgot one of my platforms. And what I need to do is to take the top flat platform. I want the thickest part of my sandwich to go through my Big Shot. And I'm going to lay right on that pencil line, that top cutting mat. I'm going to go ahead and run that through the Big Shot. You can go over that mark. It won't matter um, because... you don't have that sandwich thickness. Now I'm just going to flip it around because again, I want my thickest part of my sandwich going through first. If I don't, if I would run it through this way, the roller will hit that top uh, mat. So just going to line that up. Again, run that through. Kind of hard when you're on a mat. It wants to slide on me here. So then when I pull that off, I just have the cutting to the line where I have my score line. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in my personal trimmer because what I want to do is score those pencil lines. So I am going to put it in my trimmer and I'm going to bring... Um, 
thought I had my stylist over here. The stylist works the best because it is hard to see exactly where you want it to stop scoring. But since I didn't bring that, I'm going to go ahead and use my personal trimmer. So I'm just scoring from where it stopped cutting to the end of the paper on both sides. So lining up that pencil mark, bringing that down, and scoring that down. I'm going to fold that down, and then this one this way. So there I have my flip. like so. want to erase those pencil marks, so just kind of made those pencil lines light so that I could erase them. Now I want to emboss my flaps. So I'm going to set that personal trimmer over. I'm going to now bring back that Big Shot. I'm going to use just tab one, and I'm going to use that new Flutter by embossing folder. These embossing folders are bigger than we've had before. They're six inches by six inches. And something that I'm finding with them, it is best to take the fold side of the folder, go in first into your big shot, and also be very careful of your corners. Because it's so wide, it's just an exact fit, and you don't want to um, damage that folder. But I did forget to do one thing. I want this card to be a four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to take and score this card at five and a half. So I have my flip here. I'm going to line that up at the four and a quarter because it's five and a half this way. And I'm going to score, and that's going to give me my extra flip on my card there. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in that folder, and I'm simply going to open my folder up, and I want that solid butterfly to be on the top because I just want to emboss the flap. So I'm going to lay that down like so. Again, making sure my score line is there. My thickest part of my sandwich to go through lined up perfectly so it doesn't hit the edge and run that through. Oops, forgot one of my pads. So I'm going to just pull that back out. Just going to lay it on top it doesn't really matter if it's on the bottom or on the top, the two mats. You just want to make sure you have that thickness. So I'm going to bring that in so you can see that I didn't emboss this part of the butterfly, but did here. So I've got it embossed down. Again, your preference whether you want the butterflies up or down. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put that in. This time I'll put my plate on the bottom and my plate on the top and run that back through. Then I want to show you the beautiful um, butterfly stamp set, that new watercolor wings. Because what it is is a three-step stamp set. We remember the three-step stamp set from um, Celebration. So I've got that all embossed. I'm going to set that aside. The three-step stamp set at Celebration, the Lotus Blossom, well, this stamp set is very similar to that. And so I'm going to bring in my solid. So there is a solid, an outline, and then a detailed and all three of the big ones and all three of the medium size. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the solid one, I'm going to use the pink pirouette, and I'm going to stamp that. And you're going to notice when you stamp this that, oops, 
I did not bring, hold on, let me go get something. Coverage. So I'm just going to flip that over and stamp that again. But what I wanted to show you was that when you stamp this image, you don't get a full um, coverage. There's some places that are missing, and that's perfectly fine. That's the way it's supposed to be. And then I see I left my blushing um, bride. I did next the blushing bride and finally the Sierra Sand. So I did the blushing bride in the outline. And I did not bring that over and I apologize. But in a couple um, days I am going to do a series on some different colors that I've been working with with these butterflies. So stay tuned. So this one I'm only going to do a two-step. Still very beautiful. There is a little antenna that goes in here, but what I am finding it's best to cut your butterfly out first. So take the butterfly and cut it out, and then you can line up where you want that center. If you stamp it first, it sometimes doesn't always work out well. And so then what I did after I ran it through the Big Shot, cut that out, then I used from the butterfly um, thinlets that we had before and cut that image out. So now I have a two-tone look. So I'm going to bring back in that flip card so you can see. I used the solid underneath from the cardstock, but then I have detail to my butterfly because I punched it out with the thinlet. So I hope you flipped over this card and that you join me again real soon.